Good day, ladies. As I indicated earlier in my post this morning, I told you that there have been a change in the cost airline. So please, you stick to that so that we can be moving ahead. So henceforth, we are going to use the new cost airline for the program. And this is a continuation from where Mr. Aaron left you. So now, the topic we're going to treat today is continuous assessment. What is continuous assessment? Continuous assessment is the system in which the quality of a student's work is judged by various pieces of work during a course and not by one final examination. You all agree with me that the Ghana Education Service Policies has metamorphosized since its introduction in some way in the year 1974. Before the introduction of continuous assessment, people who seek to move up to the next grade were judged by just a one short examination. Where students will just sit for a particular exam, for instance, maybe say carpentry. So when they are able to pass within the hour of their examination, then they say they have qualified to move to the next stage. By a time came, when scholars or experts met and said, no, even a particular student may, that particular day wouldn't have his or her day. And for that matter, may fail the exams. Probably that student too, was very good during the course presentation or during the lecture or the presentation period or the teaching period the student was contributing to class work was contributing to everything but then because he or she failed in just a short exam organized in a day he or she cannot be promoted so there was the need for the introduction of continuous assessment So when we say continuous assessment, it is a process that calls for all the pieces of work of a particular student in the course of teaching and the learning process. When some are inclusive the final examination or the end of term or end of year exams, you sum up everything together is what we call the continuous assessment. So it is a process that starts from the first lesson you assess the student, you put the mask down. The second period or the second lesson you put the mask down. You add up, you accumulate it, you put everything together. So there is nothing like stop within the assessment period. So continuous assessment in a nutshell is a form of or a way of getting information from students by accumulating whatever they've learned from since the course or the subject started. So one expert in assessment, Ogui in the year 1984 did a study and also tried to define continuous assessment. And he indicated that continuous assessment is a, a formative evaluation process concerned with finding out in a systematic manner the overall gains that student has made in terms of knowledge, attitude, and skills after a given set of learning experiences. In Oguni's definition, he also emphasized the point that if one student should sit for one short examination to be assessed or to get an information about the child, the assessor will end up getting only an aspect of that student. And for that matter, if an assessor wants to get a true reflection of what a particular student is trying to put forth, then you need to be general. Everything inclusive about that particular student should come forth to say this particular child has failed or has passed. So he did indicate that the knowledge aspect of the child, the attitude and the skills, everything inclusive should be part of the assessment process. And so therefore, as knowledge and attitude skills cannot be assessed in a particular day, it should be continuous. It should be in bits, one after the other, so that everything inclusive at the end of the day, upon adding the end of term or end of year 
examination, you just sum everything up together to make the continual assessment of that particular student. Then you can generally say this child has failed or has passed in the particular course area. In sum, continuous assessment is the periodic and systematic method of assessing and evaluating a student's attributes or learning. Having explained into details what continuous assessment is, now let us look at some of the characteristics of continuous assessment. One, continuous assessment is cumulative. The final grade awarded a student at the end of a term or year is an accumulation of all the attainments throughout the term or the year, as I indicated in the explanation of continuous assessment. Continual assessment on a particular people or student is like you are building a dossier on the person or you are building a file on that person. So everything concerning the course area that the child is able to exhibit, you record and you put it down. You record and you put it down. So at the end of the day, you pick everything together, you sum up the mass and that is the child's performance. That is why we are saying continuous assessment is cumulative. It's a compilation of the various marks that a particular child has been able to attain since the start of the course to the end of the course. So here, you don't say the child was able to get, say, 70 in the end of term examination, so the child is good. So what of the assignment the child did? What of the class uh, assignment and the quizzes the child did? The exercises the child did? So everything inclusive, you put them together to say, this is the assessment of the child. That is why we say assessment is cumulative. So, for example, quiz one scores can be put down, quiz two score can be put down, and a score from any other assignment or presentation that the child is able to partake in is put down. After everything, the final examination or the end of the term examination is also put down. You sum everything up that you bring forward to grip the child, to get a one or maybe the two that we have been using to grip our students. The next characteristics of continuous assessment that we want to look at is, continuous assessment is comprehensive. Continuous assessment is comprehensive. It involves an in-depth assessment of each personality. Again, it involves an in-depth assessment of each personality. As I indicated in the definition of continuous assessment, because it is not a one-shot examination that will bring out the detail of a particular student or child, the various facets of the educational domain is bring forth. So it cuts across the three main domains that the cognitive, affective, and the psychomotor. So it involves every aspect of the child. So if the child is sociable in class, an aspect of that is recorded and put down. If the child responds to questions in class, that aspect is recorded and put down. So every aspect of the child, including the cognitive, how the child is able to exhibit, to create, to do things on his or her own, every aspect of such is put down. So it is comprehensive, meaning it cuts across, across the various facets of the educational domain and particularly every aspect of that particular person that you want to assess. And that it involves the assessment of tasks, activities, and outcomes demonstrated in the cognitive, that is the knowledge aspect, the affective, and the psychomotor, that the skills that the person is able to exhibit. Again, continuous assessment is diagnostic. It involves a constant and continual monitoring of students' performance and achievement and therefore identifying their strengths and weaknesses. When we say diagnostic, diagnostic came from the word diagnose. If you go to the hospital, the doctors or the physicians have to diagnose you. Diagnosing means finding out what is wrong about you, what is really happening, your weakness, what really brought you to the hospital. So in education too, we're saying that continuous assessment is diagnostic because T 
teachers and instructors use continuous assessment as a tool to find out the strength and the weakness or what is happening actually to a particular student or a class. So as I indicated, continuous assessment is a process and it starts from the day one the course is introduced to the day, the last day the course ends. So as the course starts and the instructor gives out a lesson, probably the very day he or she ends a particular lesson, some assessment will be given, some assignment will be given, some presentation will be given. So in as much the students are coming in to do their presentation or presenting their assignment or bringing in their exercises, their scores will tell the instructor or the teacher if the students are doing well or where they have problems so that he can hammer on it in the next presentation or in their next meeting. So continuous assessment will help the instructor or the teacher to know where he should put more strength or where he should hammer on in the next presentation. Or probably if he can even go back and organize some remedial classes in that very area. And more so, if the students are able to score very well, it means the methods and the skills and the various strategies you put in place in teaching that very area has also worked out so you can use it in other course area too. The next characteristics of continuous assessment we are looking at is continuous assessment is guidance oriented. Continuous assessment is guidance oriented. As continuous assessment helps to identify students' strengths and weaknesses, as indicated above, teachers will use their strengths and weaknesses to help them build on what they know better and also come out to learn more about where they have or they are weak or they have weaknesses. So teachers or instructors will use the outcome of the diagnosis to guide students to do more, especially where they have their strengths and also to back up where they are weak. So continual assessment is used as guidance in teaching and learning. The next one we're looking at is continuous assessment is formative. If you can recall, the last lesson Mr. Aaron ended, he did mention that we have two main types of assessment, formative assessment and summative assessment. So if you could recall, we did indicate that formative assessment is a process of assessing students and summative is the one-shot examination or test organized to grade students. So we are saying that continual assessment is formative and when we say formative, student assessment is done during the teaching and learning process. So at every stage in the teaching and learning process, students or peoples are assessed or some kind of information or some bit of information is being solicited from the student as we do teaching and learning. So for instance, yes, who can tell us the capital town of Guinea on course of teaching a subject like African studies? If the teacher should pose this question on course of his or her presentation, it means you are doing formative. It is a process. So continual assessment is formative. So students' assessment is done during the teaching and learning process. So it allows for immediate and constant feedback to be provided to the student on his or her performance. So if the student is to get right, the teacher will say, clap for him. Or the teacher might even praise the child. Clap for him, correct, good. So the student in turn gets a constant feedback of what he or she is doing. And if it is wrong, the teacher goes back to correct him for the entire student body to know what is happening. So feedback is immediate when we say continuous assessment is formative. Again, continuous assessment is systematic. 
the assessment is conducted in a sequential order. It operates on a world schedule program. When we say continuous assessment is systematic, you are aware, you are aware of the fact that before a tutor at a college will introduce a course, a course outline is given. Where at any point in time that people or students will take a quiz is announced that at the end of the first unit there will be a quiz. At the end of the third unit there will be a quiz. And at the end of the fifth unit, there will be end of semester exams. So everything is programmed. Everything is scheduled on time. It's not that you just wake up one day and you say, no, tomorrow we have a quiz. No, we don't do that in continuous assessment. So for instance, teachers plan in advance when they will conduct the exercises, the class tests, the quizzes, take home assignments, presentations, and even the ter end of term examination or the semester examinations. So you note that assessment is not to be done spontaneously. It is wrong to do assessment spontaneously or say, please pick your exercise books. We are going to do exercise on this and that and that. It is wrong to do that. The students must be aware, even the areas to be assessed should be told to go and prepare and come and face the assignment. That is why in the WAIC examinations, timetable is brought forth for students to study when they are to take their oral English exams, when they are to take their written or uh, exam, uh, English exams, when they are to take a break, when they are to do this, when they are to do this. So everything is programmed, it's systematic. It is on plan. So continuous assessment give room for a systematic assessment of every individual who is under learning or who is under instruction. Now we are moving, on having said all this, now we are moving to the advantages of continuous assessment. As I indicated earlier, something informed policy makers before they brought forth continuous assessment. Before the introduction of continuous assessment, People will just sit in for their O level and A level examination. If they pass, that is that. If they don't pass, that is that. So if you fail, it means all the 10, 11 years of academic work has been in vain. But experts sat down and said, no. Maybe the very day the child was taking the O level geography, that child was having some stomach ache or headache and for that matter he couldn't perform and that would be the end of the child's academic life so no so we should pile up some aspect of what the child is doing at the school and see why or whoever the examination body is and go and add up to whatever letter the child is able to write at the wayek or any of the examination bodies so we go and add up so Continuous assessment has various advantages to its introduction. And one, continuous assessment provides an excellent picture of a student performance over a period of time. Continuous assessment provides an excellent picture of a student's performance over a period of time. So like I was saying, you can't totally say this child is not good or this child is good unless you have got access to his or her assessment results. And here be the case. The child performance in the first unit is known. The child performance in the second unit is known. The child performance in the third unit is known. The child performance in the fourth unit is known. After Overall, the final or the end of term examination will be conducted, putting together from the first assessment from the first unit, second unit, third unit, to come up to know the performance of the child. So just in case the child was not able to perform in the end of year or end of semester exams, 
maybe the first assessment the child did in the first unit can cover up. The first assessment, if it's not able to cover up, maybe the second marks the child was able to get in the second assessment will come and cover up. So upon adding up all these, and yet the child is not able to perform, then you can see holistically that the child has failed or is not able to perform in that very course area. So every aspect of the course is assessed on the child to know the actual or the true performance of the child on that very course. So for instance, if we have a PE class and probably we have three activities to perform, the examination to, uh, to the PE course could center on only one aspect of the three areas could center on only one aspect that a particular child is not good at that area. But then, if the child was to have done some aspect in the first area that he's able to do very good, and in the second aspect in which you see the child seems to be very good, even if the exam is killed to one side, yet the child will be able to perform or his assessment results will be able to take him or her far because assessment has covered most of the aspect or facet of his or her area. So we say continuous assessment provide an excellent picture of the student performance. The next advantage you'll be looking at is that it enables the classroom teacher as well as the school administration to be actively and more meaningfully involved in the assessment of the students throughout the period of teaching and learning. As I indicated earlier, continuous assessment is diagnostic. It is used to find the strength and weaknesses of the peoples or students so the teachers can do more in the area that they have weaknesses. So we are saying that Continuous assessment will enable the school administration and the teachers to be involved in the entire teaching and learning process. Because if you do any bit of assessment, that seems the students are not following what you are doing. It means you have to go and come back, probably organize some remedial classes for the students. And while they are also doing good, you commend them and move on. So it's more or less like everybody is involved or is looking on whatever is happening in the course area because every bit is assessed and we know the stage where we have reached so that we can continue. The next advantage we're looking at is that it enables the measurement of the three important domains in the taxonomy of educational objectives. I've hinted on this earlier. In the taxonomy of educational objectives, we have three main domains. That is cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. When we say cognitive, it is talking about the knowledge aspect of the individual. When we say affective, it is talking about the attitude or the social aspect of that individual. And psychomotor is talking about the skills. So we are saying that when a particular teacher or instructor sticks to continue assessment, he or she doesn't have any problem again of going back to say, I only assess the knowledge aspect of the child, or I only assess the psychomotor aspect of the child. Every domain in the educational objective is assessed, every aspect is assessed. So, for instance, a particular student gets home assignments, class exercises, at times some class projects, go and do this, where they'll be using their hand to create, psychomotor is in there. When they get class exercises, their knowledge level is assessed. When students are allowed to demonstrate or do some presentation in the class, their social or attitude, their affective domain is being assessed over there. So, we are saying that, when one sticks or one intends to use continuous assessment, it means 
that particular individual is trying to make or pay homage to all the three main educational domains that is cognitive, affective, and the psychomotor. The next advantage of continual assessment is it helps to minimize the student's fear and anxiety about failure in examination. You all know, and we have been hearing from the various news bulletins, there is no day that Wyatt was sit down to write BEC and we don't get people collapsing, people falling down, people who can't even write the exam to the end, especially the first days, the Mondays they take their first paper because they fear, they have some anxiety. This is their first external exam they are going to write. But it doesn't happen same at the various uh, uh, WASI centers because they have ever tasted what? For, uh, uh, external exams before. So we are saying that if a particular student is aware that part of the mass that he or she has accumulated at the school is going to be added up to what he or she is going to write in the WASI or the BEC, there's no fear again. More so, the child, upon subjecting him or her to continual assessment means every day and then he or she takes examination or some quizzes or some ass ass assessments. So he or she wouldn't fear again. Because today he took, let's say, maybe about three exercises at the school. Tomorrow, three exercises. The next day, many assignments. So what is it again that you have to fear so far as examination is concerned? So day and then the child has been taking exams. So he or she wouldn't fear examination again. And God, it is continuous. Every day we do it. Every day we do it. So there is nothing like fear or anxiety in any terminal examination or any external examination. It's like they are used to because of the use of continuous assessment. Again, continuous assessment encourages students to work assiduously throughout the period of teaching and learning. Because the students are aware that every bit of assessment carried on them, so far as the course is concerned, will be put down and will be added to their final grade. They are ever ready to take every aspect of assessment serious. Because they are aware that even the class dictations that they do, if they fail, it is going to worry them in their final grade. They are aware that the class assignment that they are taking home, if they fail or they are not able to do well, it is going to have an effect in their final grade. Day in and then, they are serious. So every assessment that is given to their children, or the people or the students, they try to take very serious on it. They are always serious because they know if they fail, it is going to have a ripple effect in their final grade. And that alone will help them to follow and continuously be attentive in class, following every teaching processes. The next advantage of continual assessment is education under the traditional summative evaluation system could be termed as syllabus or syllabus. Syllabus or syllabus. Education under the traditional before the introduction of continuous assessment was termed as the syllabus or the syllabus. Where Students will never be assessed, or even if nothing at all, they will be assessed. That very mass or that very uh, record will never be put down to appear in their final grades. So we are saying that in the traditional system, where students will just go and sit down for an O level or an A level exams, is termed as the summative evaluation because it is one shot. One final exam will be used to assess or grade the particular individual or will be used to promote that child. 
So that system was termed as the slavish or the slums. The next continuous advantage of continuous assessment that we're looking at is that it gives constant feedback. So constant feedback is provided and this provides the groundwork for teachers to engage in diagnostic teaching. Because teachers at, the, at, at a goal, even in the classroom or in the next day, they get feedback on whatever they taught. They will base on it to do the next teaching and learning processes. We have ever said we teach from known to unknown. So what you taught yesterday, if the students are not able to master it, how then do you continue? But once you get feedback and the feedback is positive, it will provide you, the teacher or the instructor, some kind, there's some kind of groundwork for you to move ahead with the next unit or the next topic. So constant feedback is given in continuous assessment. The next advantage you'll be looking at is that record keeping is an important aspect of the teaching and learning process. As teachers, you know that we prepare lesson news. And every lesson that we prepare, we have a column called the remarks column. That you have to put some kind of assessment there for students to do. It means after every lesson, you need to assess students to know whatever they know about what you have taught them. So if you assign them any work to do in a particular topic, you do and you give feedback. And such records are recorded in a book and kept down for future use. Because it is continuous. The first one will be kept down. Second one will be kept down. The third one will be kept down. So at the end of the term or at the end of the year, you just go back to sum up. The first one you did, the second one you did, everything up. So by doing this, the teachers or instructors are keeping records on every aspect of the teaching and the learning process of the people. The next advantage is that parents are provided with better and clearer picture of their world's performance and achievement in school over a period of time and learning experiences. Like before, a parent could only know if the child is performed at school at the end of the term or at the end of the year. But today, a parent can just walk in and say, please say, I just want to know the performance of my world. The, this parent can be given the exercise book of the child to just flip through whether the child is performing. Better, the parent can also be given the continual assessment record book for him to know the performance of the child because we have such records. That record is there. So parents are given a clearer picture about their words. Unlike a parent can just walk in and ask, I want to know whether my child is performing. And the teacher will be there, wouldn't know whatever to say. Eh, he contributes in class, that, that, and that. And so what? We need a picture. We need something to prove. And the proof will be the exercise book. The proof will be maybe the graph book. The proof will be the lab book. The proof will be something the child has been able to manufacture, something the child has been able to create using the hand, and it is at the storeroom or exhibition room. So the parent can quickly walk in there and say, this was done by your son, Kofi. When we want to creative art uh, uh, presentation or creative art demonstration. So parents are provided with better and clearer picture of their walls with the introduction of continuous assessment.
Having said all this, continuous assessment also has some disadvantages. And one, continuous assessment brings about an increase in the workload of teachers. As we indicated earlier in the characteristics of continuous assessment, continuous assessment is diagnostic, continuous assessment is systematic, continuous assessment is comprehensive. This gives a clearer picture of the fact that continuous assessment is not an easy job. Where in the school where they don't have continuous assessment books, it means teachers must even rule lines to record every aspect of students' records in the book. That alone is not an easy task. Giving exercises on every lesson you teach, it means you have to be marking exercises. So say if a particular teacher has 50 people in the class, just imagine the number of exercise books he or she will mark in a particular morning before another lesson is being introduced. So continual assessment brings about an increase in the workload of teachers. Having said all this, just remember, if a particular teacher is able to do, say, maybe 10 exercises, 4 assignments, 3 presentations, all mounting up to say maybe 17 continuous assessment. It means you have to sit down and add up all the six assessments. All of them, of these 50 students that you have in your class, or 50 people that you have in your class. So continuous assessment add up to the workload of the teacher. You have to add up everything before finally you come to add up the final examination or the end of term examination before you do what accumulation and strike the percentages out so if you are to do for about 50 students or 50 people you can just imagine the workload that will be on you so if you are a particular teacher and you teach in level 100 level 200 level 300 just imagine the kind of work that will be on you because of continuous assessment the next disadvantage of continuous assessment is that to implement a continuous assessment program, it is assumed that teachers have the requisite scores in test construction. Most of our teachers, especially in Africa and Ghana, are not experts in test construction. Before a test can be valid, can be reliable, it must pass through some processes to become a standardized test. But do our teachers have that requisite skills? Do they know how to test the reliability and the validity of a particular test? So we are saying that teachers in the field lack requisite skills in the construction of test items. So most of our test items are ambiguous. So they don't seek to test or assess what they are supposed to assess. They don't measure what they are supposed to measure. So most of the test, we will say, is not good for them to use to assess people. So teachers lack that skills of constructing test items. So that is also a problem. But here be the case, with the introduction of continual assessment, every teacher is more or less at the basic schools or the first, is to do not less than 10 exercises or assignments or presentations before the term ends. So if the teacher doesn't have that technical know-how, how is he going to do these test constructions to assess students. So one of the disadvantages is that our teachers at the front lack the requisite skills in the construction of tests. The next disadvantage of continuous assessment is that in Ghana, 
One problem is the inadequacy of materials and equipments. You go to some schools, teachers will not even get access to continuous assessment record books. So how then do you tell a particular teacher or instruct a teacher to do continuous assessment and record? Where do you expect that teacher to record the mass? The book is not there. So where do you expect the teacher to record the mass, even if he's able to do the test? I remember in a particular school where a teacher wanted to assess students to draw something. The school had a crayon of which students will always go and pick them and come and do their work. But the teacher went to the storeroom and saw that the crayon is almost finished. So if he should do that exercise, it means in the end of term examination, he wouldn't get any crayon for the students or the people to use again. And so therefore, he must cancel that very exercise. So inadequacy of materials. The same thing, a teacher wanted to do a mass exercise where graph will be given. In that school, they have some graph sheets. The teacher moved to the storeroom and saw that the graph sheets were almost finished. So if he is to do that assignment where students will use the graph sheet, it means in the final examination or the end of term examination, there wouldn't be additional graph sheet for him to use. So inadequacy of materials has hindered the teacher from doing his or her continual assessment. The next disadvantage of continual assessment is that continual assessment, especially in the first and second cycle levels, means less dependency on an external examination body. Continuous assessment, especially in the first and the second cycle levels, means less dependency on an external examination body. The fate of the individual student lies more in the hands of the classroom teacher when it comes to continual assessment. So this situation generates fear, doubts and apprehensions in the minds of the public about the degree of fairness in assessing the achievement of students. So how fair is a particular teacher? to all the students in the class. So in the face of the public, a particular teacher wouldn't be fair in conducting a particular exercise. More so, a particular student in, an, in the class can be copying from his or her book without the knowledge of the teacher. So that child can perform very well. So that is one of the disadvantages. So in this wise, they have placed less dependency on an, in the external examination bodies. The next disadvantage is that in the first and the cycle, second cycle institutions, certificates obtained are based on performance and achievement in external examination in Ghana. If schools award certificates based on the attainment of their own students, so if we are to use continuous assessment to grade students, to give them final certification or certificates to go out to work, standards will vary from school to school as well as certificates. So the credibility of certificate becomes doubtful in most cases. So to handle this problem, school will contribute some percentage from the accumulation of the continuous assessment. And the external examination body, being the WAIC or the, any, any other examination body, will also provide the other mass to make a whole. Another problem is that of supervision. As I indicated earlier, if students 
are doing continual assessment and they are to take assignments home. Who is there to supervise them? Even if they gave it to their elder brothers to do it for them. Who knows? You can't supervise. If students are in the class, as the nature of Ghana education system is, maybe 40 students or people in the class. So a teacher organizing class exercise. Can he at a point sit and look at all the children and say all of them are doing the work from their minds and are not copying? A particular student can be hiding a book and will be copying. So at the end of the day, is he is able to score 10 and the rest are able to score, say, 2 out of 10. You say that child is good. It means you are being biased in advance. So one of the disadvantages is that supervision is lacking when it comes to continual assessment. Also, there is an, a problem of records maintenance when it comes to continuous assessment. There is also an additional problem that comes up with the maintenance of records. There is a key problem in how we keep assessment records of students. How many basic schools in Ghana here have a cupboard where we keep books? But move to the various uh, private schools and see. They have cupboards and they have even called out for cupboard monitors where they have parlors to lock them. You go to the public schools, the exercise books will be on the teacher's desk. So even if a particular student should pick one up from it, you can't even know. Where do we put our continual assessment books? The records that we have kept, where do we keep them? So there is lack of maintenance so far as our record keeping on continual assessment is concerned. Now we're going to look at the role of the teacher so far as continuous assessment is concerned to the external examination bodies. And for that matter, if you come to Ghana here, it's the WAIC. So the Ministry of Education, as a matter of policy, expects all teachers to undertake one, to give class assignment or exercises fortnightly and record the scores of four of them with a maximum score of 10 each. That the Ministry of Education expect all teachers under the Ghana Education Service, being in the second cycle or the junior level, to assign students with exercises and assignments every two weeks. And the assignments and the exercises can be four or more than four and record a mark each of such assessment for 10 or cumulative to make 40 marks. So the assignments and the exercises can be more than four and the best four out of it can be recorded and the rest you can leave it. Or at its best, a teacher can do only four and record 10 marks each in cumulative to make 40 marks. Also, the ministry expects teachers to conduct three class tests in a term with a subtotal of 40. So each teacher is expected to conduct three class tests all put together to make 40 marks. So you can apportion the marks as how you want it. The first class test can take say maybe 20 marks. The second one can take 10 marks, and the third one can take 10 marks, all coming together to make 40. Or better, you can say the first class test 15 marks, second class test 15, making 30, and the last class test making 10. All cumulative or subtotal 40 marks. Again, 
the teacher is expected to give people at least four homework or projects in a term with a subtotal of 20. So projects or homework can be as many as ever, but then the four best of the students can be recorded in the continuous assessment book. Or at its best, if you don't want any trouble, you can give four projects or four homeworks and record each at say maybe five mark each. All together you make 20 marks. So having said all these, assignments and exercises for each from every student making up 40 marks. Three class tests totaling 40 marks. Four projects and homeworks all together making 20 marks. So upon summation of all these three, you get 100 marks. So three assessments all together giving a total score of 100 marks, which will then be scaled down to 30% as the internal marks for each people. So what this is trying to portray here is that after every examination in WAIC, being it JHS or WASI exams, say maybe you are doing social studies examination, being it BEC or WASI, what we are saying that the school is expected to give a total aggregate of every student, say maybe 30% of what he or she has done so far as that course is concerned. So 30% mark is to be given by the school. So the aggregate, the continual assessment of the child, everything that he did in social studies is cumulated and scaled down to 30%. So that mark is sent to Waik. So the social studies exam the child will go and sit and write will also be scaled down to 70%. After which, the 30% mark from the school and the 70% mark from the one-shot exams the child did that day is summed up or is added up. So that mark together is what is going to be used to create that particular child. So we are saying that the marks that every individual gets from WAIC, being BC or WASI exams, it's not only from the one-shot exam you sat in for, but some aspect came from the school, from the continuous assessment the school submitted to WAIC. So at the end of the junior and the senior secondary schools, all the scores a people obtains are scaled down to 30 marks. So that is the work the child will do at the school level. Everything will be scaled up to what? 30% mark. And, forward, and will be forwarded to where? WAIC or any of the examination body that you are going to sit for the exams. Whereas 70% is obtained from the external assessment, that is WAIC. So in Ghana, our educational system has been based on the continual assessment system. Where the school in which you are coming from will give WAIC 30% of whatever you know about that course area. And the one short exam you will set for that course will also give you 70%. So all sum up will give you the grade that you get, say maybe one in social studies, say maybe two in science, say maybe three in uh, a Greek, or maybe A in geography, B, say three, uh, B3 in business management. Before one will get this, it means the school brought something and the exams the student or the people also sat also brought forth something so all put together will give you the final grade so that is the continual assessment as expected by all teachers by the ministry of education as a policy to be submitted to WAIC so having said this we are going to look at the expected roles of teachers to ensure that all these three things are done successfully. Or we see to the successful implementation of the continuous assessment policy to be submitted to WAIC. 
So one of the roles of the teacher is that the teacher must accept the philosophy of continuous assessment. A teacher at the Ghana Education Service to accept the philosophy of continual assessment. As we indicated earlier, continual assessment as it is, is a very cumbersome exercise. It's a very tedious one, of course. So most teachers run away from it. But then, we should just be convinced, authorities should convince teachers to know that continual assessment is the best form of assessing students so far as assessment in schools or educational institutions is concerned rather than going to use the old form of one-shot exams to grade people so teachers must try in their own ways means possible to be convinced to accept to agree to the fact that continual assessment is the best form of assessing students or to know the true reflection of what people are doing or to get information from your learners The next thing we will be looking at is that the teacher needs to be knowledgeable about continuous assessment. A teacher should know all the requisite skills so far as continuous assessment is concerned. The teacher should know the weakness, the strength, the advantages, the disadvantages, and everything concerning continuous assessment, even to go far to know how to enter their mass in the continuous assessment book. Everything about continuous assessment should be at the fingertips of every teacher. He who is ready to use continuous assessment. So teachers should be knowledgeable so far as continuous assessment is concerned. They should know every bit about continual assessment so that when they are using they don't get any problem whatsoever so it is expected that teachers get knowledge about continuous assessment at the beginning of each academic year and term or semester the teacher must make a timetable for assessment to be made as we indicated earlier assessment as it is should never and ever be spontaneous. That if we see the faces of your student one morning, you just say, today we are going to do English class test. No, we don't do that. You tell them early, they prepare. You even give them areas so that they can prepare and come and face you. So at the beginning of each academic year, teachers are expected as a rule to continuous assessment, you have to give them guidelines as to when and how they are going to take their assessment so far as that course is concerned. So, it's not different from what you have been noticing on the Monaco campus. Teachers will tell you that at the end of this period, you are going to get your first quiz. At the end of this very unit, you are going to get your second quiz. And second semester examination is also scheduled at this period. Everything is systematic. Everything is planned. So at the beginning of each academic year, it's expected that teachers plan something like a timetable or give up a schedule as to how assessment is going to be made so far as a particular course is concerned. The next one is that the teacher must assess the learning outcomes and performance at the end of each unit of instruction. The teacher must be prepared to, at least as a matter of agency, that after every lesson, assess students. Because we have indicated earlier that assessment, uh, continual assessment as its nature, is diagnostic. It is used to diagnose, to know the weakness and strength, so that you can build on where you left. We teach from known to unknown. So if you are able to diagnose, to know the weakness and strength, then you can stand there or put on what they already know. So teachers must assess the learning outcomes and performance at each learning 
So if you know this one, they were able to master, it means the next lesson, you are going to continue. And if you know they were not able to master where you left, it means you must hammer on that very area for them to get the understanding before you can do what? Go and continue. Learning from known to unknown. So if they don't know, you can continue. So teachers must, as a matter of agency, assess the learning outcomes and performances at the end of each unit or each lesson. No wonder that if you go into our various lesson notebooks, after every lesson, we have a remarks column where teachers must write their assessments. The next one is the teacher must spread the assessment over all areas of students' behavior. I indicated this earlier that under the educational domains, we have cognitive, we have affective, and we have psychomotor. The cognitive seeks to measure the knowledge level of students. The affective seeks to measure the attitude or the social aspect of students. And the psychomotor seeks to measure the scores. So as a teacher, you must be prepared to measure all the various aspects so far as the educational domain is concerned. So the teacher is expected to do all this. So having heard this, it means you have to make available various assessment tools like the checklist, observation, a paper and pencil test so that you can just cut across all the various facets or areas of the student behavior. The next thing that I will talk about is the teacher must formulate measurable, specific and attainable instructional objectives for each need for instruction. Because the teacher is going to assess student performance at the end of each lesson or every unit, it means you must formulate measurable, specific and attainable instructional objectives. Things that are rare, things that you think it's attainable, that you can measure at the end of every period. It shouldn't be something that will take a longer period. Because we have projects, and projects can take, say, maybe the whole term. But to specifically, a particular lesson, you must get attainable and measurable. Just instant, two, three days, you just get the results. So as a teacher who is prepared to make use of continual assessment, then you must be prepared to formulate what? Measurable specific ones and attainable instructional objectives so that at a goal even at the classroom as you stand there you can get feedback you can guess what you are uh, 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 information to just uh, 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 base on it to make progress in your teaching the next one is the teacher must provide constant feedback the teacher must provide constant feedback so you can just imagine that a student doing class exercise and you don't mark the next week you give another exercise you don't mark do you think a particular people or student will be prepared to do your exercise again the answer is a big no not to talk of this if you give exercises or assignment and you don't mark how do you even know the weakness of the students or the people? How then do you know the strength of the people? How then do you as a teacher even assess yourself that the method that you are using is good? Or the skills you are adapted in teaching that very course area is good? So the teacher must provide constant feedback. And giving the feedback, it will also tell you, the teacher, something that you are doing well. So far as that course is concerned, the methodologies you have employed in teaching that area is very good. That notwithstanding, students who, or people will also be interested in doing what? Your work, your assignment, because they know you will give them feedback. And even in the area that they did well, they will just be happy. And where they didn't do well, they will get other people to assist them, master those areas. The next thing is, the teacher must record all the assessment of the student in all the areas of learning and instruction in the appropriate records. As we indicated, as a policy from the GES, there is a book designed purposely for continuous assessment. 
So we are saying that as a teacher who is prepared to make use of continual assessment, then you must also keep tuned to your records. So you must record all the assessment of the student in all the areas of learning and instruction in the appropriate records. So if you call people to come and do presentation, you assign mass, please you have to go into the book and record. If you give them assignments to take home work, you they come and you record the mass into the book. If it is an exercise, you record. If it is a fold work, if it is something that they have to create using their hands, the teacher has to record all these things in the appropriate record book, that is the continuous assessment book. The teacher must be involved in remedial and individualized teaching. The teacher must be involved in remedial and individualized teaching. When we say remedial and individualized teaching, it stems from when we are able to do correct diagnosis to see the weakness and strength of teachers and the strength of students if you know the strength and the weakness of students then you will know the kind of teaching strategies you will give to your people so remedial and individualized teaching is where you just segregate some particular people or students who are not able to cope in a particular lesson or individuals who were not following a particular lesson so as a teacher when you do continuous assessment you know the people who follow a particular lesson or who did well in a particular lesson or a particular unit so you bring them out from the majority of the student and start to do some remedials for them or you target individuals who did not do well in a particular area so this is not different from when you go to university campuses they always have people called the TAs or the teaching assistants these individuals come in to organize remedial and individualized teachings for people who couldn't follow what the lecturer the professor or the doctor did so this teaching assistant have been helping in that regard so as a teacher you have to be prepared in doing remedial and individualized teaching so far as you are also prepared to use what continuous assessment because you will get to know the weakness and some strength of some students but if you get the weakness you need to do remedial and individualized teaching the next thing is the teacher must also engage in guidance and counseling as a teacher no wonder at the college level when you are about, about exiting a uh, uh, college every teacher is being introduced to some bit of guidance and counseling this will help you in your continuous assessment processes so the teacher must engage in guidance and counseling processes when you have been able to know the weakness or the weaknesses and the strength of the people you use the outcome to guide your people for instance, a particular student's performance in a particular course area can inform the teacher to tell the child that no, you will be very good at uh, reading maybe us in the secondary school. So as a teacher, you will be using his or her performance to be guiding the child as to the course he or she will do in the secondary school. Even in the future career or in the future vocation that the child will do, ah, I can see you can use your, your, your knowledge to create you'll be very good artist in the near future so i suggest if you go to the secondary school you do visual arts this is guidance and counseling so you use the outcome of continuous assessment to do guidance and counseling. so as a teacher you must be prepared to engage in guidance and counseling from the resource of the assessment uh, continuous assessment the teacher must engage in constant evaluation of himself and of the continuous assessment program. As I indicated earlier, if you do continuous assessment and you always see that your students are performing poorly, please as a teacher, 
you must also try as a way possible to also evaluate yourself. And evaluating yourself as a teacher means you evaluate yourselves. You evaluate your methodologies. That are uh, what I'm doing, is it that the students are not following? What I'm doing, is it that the peoples are not happy? Is it that the peoples are not following the methods and skills? Please, as a teacher, you must engage in the constant evaluation of yourself. And when you say yourself, it means the way you have been able to master the content you are, that you are going to deliver, the skills, the methodology, whether you use lecture method, you use demonstration method, any aspect of you as a teacher, even your address code to the class, every aspect of it should be evaluated. And then you come forward to evaluate the continual assessment program. Which of the assessment program do you always use uh, uh, observation? Do you always give assignments? Which of the assessment procedures do you use to be assessing your people? So, as a teacher, you must be prepared to evaluate yourself and the assessment procedures. I am done. Please, you consider the activity four and submit to your various tutors as we did before. Thank you very much. Have a good day.